Okay, in organic chemistry, acids and bases is really quite qualitative. So we're often looking at whether a compound is even acidic or basic at all, or if we compare two compounds, which one is more acidic or more basic, or which part of an organic, organic compound is acidic or basic. Now, when we look at compounds in organic chemistry and we're looking at acidity or basicity, I really want you to remember four general principles, and these are related to the letters A, R, I, and O. So A stands for atom, R stands for resonance, I is induction, and O is orbital. Okay, and this is uh, the general order in which I want you to think of um, in terms of looking at the acidity of a compound. So a is more important generally than R, R is more important generally than I, and O is normally the last on the list. Now this becomes more clear when we look at examples, so let's look at a few examples. So firstly for atom, if we compare, for example, ethane versus methylamine or methylamine, then which one of these two is more acidic? And remi reminder, when we're looking at acidity, we're looking at the equilibrium between this compound and its conjugate base. And so if I draw this in very briefly here, then for ethane, that will be CH3, CH2 minus, well, we've lost a, a proton off that carbon there. So I might actually just put that negative charge above that carbon there versus the equilibrium with CH3, NH, just one hydrogen, minus. So we would, we would lose the proton from that nitrogen. Now, nitrogen is further to the right from carbon, and therefore it is more electronegative. There's more protons in the nucleus that can help to stabilize the extra electron, that negative charge. And so overall, as we go to the right, in terms of electronegativity, we're able to stabilize the negative charge more easily, and therefore those atoms are generally more acidic. And so we would say that it's likely that methylamine is going to be more acidic than ethane. And that's indeed the case. So if we look at the acidity of these compounds, the pKa for ethane is 50, and the pKa for methylamine is around 36. These get difficult to compare because with very non-acidic compounds, the numbers get you know, difficult to measure. Now, what about if we look at the next one along? Um, so we're going to the water so right in the periodic, periodic table. And we look at, and I'm actually going to look at uh, ethanol. So one extra carbon, but it's generally the same principle. And uh, what's the acidity of ethanol? So ethanol, if I just look at my pKa over here, it is 15.9. So around 16. 15.9, so a lot more acidic than an amine. And that's because oxygen is so much more able to stabilize a negative charge. And so we can pull that proton off ethanol relatively easily compared to off ethylamine. So we would have that. So ethoxide would be the conjugate base for ethanol. Now, there's one extra thing to remember in terms of atom, and that's when we go down the periodic table rather than across. So as we go down, we actually get to less electronegative elements, but we get more protons in the nucleus. So if we compare, um, let's have a look at ethanol versus uh, ethane thiol. So this is the sulfur analog of ethanol. Now ethane thiol, imagine if we're looking at oxygen, we've got a nucleus with you know, a certain number of protons in it, and you can go and look at the atomic number and work out how many protons are in the nucleus of oxygen. And compare that to the larger nucleus of sulfur. It has extra protons in the nucleus. And so around here we've got electrons. And overall, when we are looking at the conjugate base, we have one extra electron than we should have if we were going to have a neutral species. And so overall, the ratio for lower row elements is more even. And so 
the extra positive charges in the nucleus, the extra protons in the nucleus, means that we're able to stabilize a negative charge more readily. And so therefore, as we go down the peri periodic table, we tend to get to more acidic compounds because the conjugate base is more stable. And so the pKa for ethane thiol, if I just look that up over here, we've got uh, 10.6. So quite a bit. It's about five orders of magnitude more acidic than uh, ethanol. Okay, so that's atom. Atom is really important. And so carbon-based uh, molecules are generally very non-acidic. They're not very acidic at all. Nitrogen, if we're looking at the nitrogen losing a proton to become an amide anion, then they are also not very acidic and quite strong bases, the amide anions. Ethoxide or other alkoxides are relatively, um, you know, fairly strong bases still. And then uh, that, and that means that uh, alcohols are not particularly acidic, although they're more acidic than amines. And then uh, thiols are more acidic than alcohols. Now, what about resonance? So a, a common way to look at resonance is we compare an alcohol like, eth uh, like ethanol versus a carboxylic acid. Okay, so if we draw out our equilibria here, we're going to have the alkoxide again for losing a proton from an alcohol, but for the carboxylic acid, we're going to have a carboxylate. And what we know about carboxylates is that we can draw another resonance form for these. And so uh, if you've got to curved arrows then in your course, then we can draw curved arrows to show how one resonance form is related to another. And then that will give us a single bond to that oxygen there. I can draw in my lone pairs if I like, and I get a second resonance form for this carboxylate anion. And we know that the more resonance structures we can draw for a compound or for an ion, the more stable it is. And this is really important for ions because in this case, I can share out that negative charge over two different oxygen atoms. And we know that the larger the volume or larger the space we can share out a, a spread out a charge, the more stable that charge is. So nature hates to have a charge localized in a small volume. And so that means that the carboxylate is relatively stabilized relative to the alkoxide. And that means that this equilibrium will be shifted relatively towards the carboxylate compared to the equilibrium for the um, alcohol and the, uh, and the alkoxide. And so therefore, we already know that the pKa for um, ethanol is 15.9. What's the pKa for the carboxylic acid, which is acetic acid in this case, it is 4.8. Okay, so a lot more acidic. In fact, about 10 orders of magnitude, 11 orders of magnitude more acidic than the alcohol. So carboxylic acids, there's an appreciable amount of ionization when you put them into water, and that's important for their, their sort of biological properties and, and other properties. Now, what about induction? So let's look at the carboxylic, carboxylic acids uh, again now. So if we compare uh, acetic acid here versus a chlorinated version of that compound. So this is uh, 2 chloroacetic acid or alpha chloroacetic acid. So we already know that the pKa for acetic acid is 4.8, but when we put in this chlorine, we're going to put in uh, an electron withdrawing atom, an electronegative atom, near where we can get a negative charge in the um, conjugate base. So when we draw out this equilibrium, the conjugate base is going to look like this. I won't draw in both resonance forms this time, but we can see that we have an electron withdrawing chlorine atom near this negative charge, and that's helping to sort of pull that negative charge, that electron density, towards the chlorine, and helps to stabilize the um, carboxylate, this negatively charged ion. And so that will help to favor that right-hand side of the equilibrium a little bit, compared to the case where we only have hydrogens, which are not particularly electron withdrawing, and so therefore they don't stabilize the negative charge nearly as well as the chlorine does. And so chloroacetic acid has a pKa of 2.9. So uh, about two orders of magnitude more acidic than acetic acid. And you can use the same reasoning around 
uh, fluoroacetic acid. And then you can start thinking, well, what if I put in a second or a third chlorine atom or a second or a third fluorine atom? And so things like trifluoroacetic acid, it is a really strong acid because we've got three electron withdrawing fluorine atoms that are helping us stabilize that negative charge. Okay, and finally, what about orbitals? So if we compare this compound, which is acetylene, versus um, ethane, we've got an sp hybridized carbon atom here, whereas here we've got an sp3 hybridized carbon atom. And what this means is when this uh, loses a proton, we're going to get a conjugate base, we'll get rid of that there, and then get a conjugate base where we have the negative charge in an orbital like this, which is an sp hybridized orbital. Now, when we look, think about hybridization of orbitals, we take a certain number of s atomic orbital, orbitals and a certain number of p atomic orbitals and we mix them together. So if we think about an s orbital, it looks like this, say a 2s, if we then compare that to a 2p orbital. In the 2p orbital we have a node here. And the node mean there's, means there's no electron density very close to the nucleus. And so that means that um, overall a 2p orbital, the electrons see a little bit, little bit less of the nuclear charge than for a 2s orbital which has no node. And so a um, if we think about hybridized orbitals, an sp orbital we have 50% s plus 50% p going into that hybridized orbital. And the s character here is able to stabilize the negative charge more effectively because there's no node near the nucleus. And so the, um, the electron density sort of sees that nucleus very, uh, very well. Whereas if we think about sp3 hybridized, we've got uh, s 25% s plus 75 percent p because we've got three different orthogonal p orbitals being mixed together with the s orbital to get these hybridized atomic orbitals so there's what we what we say that we this has less s character and more p character and so therefore a negative charge in an sp3 orbital is uh, less stabilized by seeing that nuclear charge than in an sp orbital. And so if we look at the um, the pKa's for these, the pKa for acetylene is around 25, whereas the pKa for um, ethane is around 50. So a huge difference between these just based on what, what type of orbital the negative charge is localized in uh, when we generate the conjugate base. Okay, so there's the four main things I want you to consider when you're thinking about acidity of organic compounds. Firstly, A for atom, is it a atom towards the right that's very electronegative, which will help to stabilize the conjugate base because it has a negative charge? Or is it lower on the periodic table, so it has a higher nuclear charge that able, is able to sort of counteract that negative charge? Uh, is there resonance involved that can help to stabilize the conjugate base through delocalization of that negative charge? Is there an inductive effect? So is there an electron withdrawing element nearby the negative charge in the conjugate base that helps to stabilize it? Or finally, O, orbital. What type of atomic orbital or um, hybridized atomic orbital is that negative charge localized in? The higher the S character, the more stabilized that negative charge is. If you'd like to get more practice with acids and bases, I've got a whole problem sheet devoted to this. Just click in the link and you can download it as a free PDF.